Hello Year 8 and welcome to Rivers Lesson 5. Um, this lesson we're going to look at the lower course river landform. So moving on from what we did in the previous lesson on the upper course river landforms. So um, just to link into what we've already done, if we look at the river long profile, um, last lesson we looked at the upper course uh, features. This lesson we'll look at the lower course. So we're going to look at the features which are kind of in this area of the river. The first feature we're going to look at is something called meanders. So meanders is quite simply are just a bend in the river. So something that might look a bit like this. All of these here are meanders. And one of the key things about meanders is the way that the water travels through them. So in a meander, the outside of the bend will have the quickest flow of water. So where I've just drawn those arrows, that's where we'll have the quickest uh, water traveling through the river. However, on the inside bend, so where I'm just doing this squiggly line, this is where water will travel uh, slower. So to help you think about that, um, this is something here to help you. So two people ran a race. Runner A runs in the inside lane, runner B runs in the outside lane. There is no staggered start. They cross the line at exactly the same time. Who ran faster and how do you know this? So, have a little think about that. The answer would be runner B and why would that be the case? Because they have a longer distance to travel. Okay, They have to travel much further in the outside lane but they finish at the same time. So when we go back to our, um, our river, the water here and the water here, this side of the river, the water has to travel much quicker than the water on this side of the river. So that is the first thing about meanders. The water on the outside travels much quicker than on the outside. So here is just an aerial view of the river, uh, river Ribble. And you can see the lower course. So Preston's just here. So we're getting closer towards the sea. So we're definitely in the lower course. There is all these meanders um, going through the river. So all these meanders going through what we call the floodplain. If we um, zoom in a little bit closer on one of these meanders, we can start to notice some of the detail. So remember, because this is the outside of the, of the river, this is where we'll get the fastest flow. This is the inside, and that will be where the slowest uh, flow of the river will be. So I've labeled this with X and Y. So X is the inside, Y is the outside. When we look at this on kind of a diagram now, you'll notice that the river, when we look at the river cross section, the river is very different on the inside to what it is on the outside. So on the inside of the meander, we have something called a slip off slope. So we have a much slower current and we get sand, shingle, other sediment deposited, so dropped off on that inside bend. However, the complete opposite on the other side, we get the faster current and we get lots of erosion on the outside. So you'll see that the inside is much shallower the outside is much deeper as well. So that can be kind of seen just in this uh, aerial shot here of the River Ribble. You can see there's a little bit of like a little beach there on the inside. That is the slip off slope. Where on this side, the river will be much deeper. So your first task is to draw a diagram, very similar to this please, and try and add as much detail as possible. So the key points I want you to remember from this is that water in the river travels quickest on the outside bend of a meander, erosion happens on the outside of a meander, and deposition happens on the inside of a meander. Okay, so erosion happens where water is moving quickest, deposition happens where the water is moving the slowest. So that is our first um, uh, lower course landform for you to think about. Right, the next one is Oxbow Lakes, and these link in uh, massively to meanders. Very similar 
in the initial formation, how they're actually made. So an oxbow lake is this feature here. So you can see this is not attached to the river, but it would have been in the past. So when we look at this on a diagram, you can see that at first it's just a normal meander. We've got the inside bend, the outside bend, and we've got erosion happening there, and there, and there, and then deposition happening where we've got that sand. Over time, this area here starts to get much smaller, as you can see compared to um, in diagram A. And then even over more time, the water will break through what we call the meander neck. Okay, you can imagine this is like a head with two eyes, nose and a smiley face. That would be the neck. Okay, so the meander neck gets broken through and then over time, because there's no water flowing through that bit anymore, that, start, that kind of gets covered up and you're left with this, which is the oxbow lake and the river kind of continues this way. So um, you can see here, the meander neck would have been this area there. And over time, this has now been cut off and it's left as a little uh, lake by the side of the river. So back to the river ribble, you can see this area here, this is a really um, quite big meander and it's really quite U-shaped as well. So it's a really um, quite an obvious meander. But you can start to see here where there's starting to be more erosion. Over time, what might happen is the river will choose to go through this area here, or it might choose to go through this area here, and the river will then continue there, and this section here will be left as an oxbow lake. But this process happens over a really long amount of time. So oxbow lakes, I want you to use these diagrams here to make a flow flow diagram to explain how an oxbow lake is formed. So use all these key terms in these descriptions to try and make a nice simple flow diagram to explain how an oxbow lake is formed. You just got to remember that this area here is called the meander neck and when the river breaks through it we're left with that oxbow lake. Right, the final um, lower course landform is called levees. So, levees are basically a bank at the side of a river. So you can see it is this higher area of ground either side of the river. These are usually naturally formed and you can see here as well, right along that would have been the river, but in this case a big flood has caused the levee to break. And quite commonly you might have heard it as the river has burst its banks. So the levee is kind of the river bank, okay? And it's a slightly higher area than the area uh, like on the floodplain. So a levee is formed usually during a flood. So during a flood, water flows over the banks and it kind of drops stuff off as soon as it, it starts to flood. Each time there's a flood, these levees get a little bit higher and a little bit higher until eventually they are much higher than what they used to be and the river can actually hold a little bit more water which kind of helps stop future floods. Uh, what we do especially in towns is we make artificial levees so we build riverbanks um, we, we might use soil and earth but we also might make uh, levees out of concrete as well to make them really strong um, so the river can basically hold more water and stop flooding. So um, that kind of brings us to the end of this lesson on the lower course landforms. What you need to do now for your work on this is the first thing is you need to draw a cross section of a meander and label it using the information provided in this video. So going all the way back to the um, meanders, I want to draw a diagram similar to this. Add these labels, maybe use some of this information as well and what I talked about to make a really detailed diagram of a meander, okay? The second uh, task for you to do is to write a flow diagram to explain the formation of an oxbow lake. So use this information here, and I want you to try and think about how does an oxbow lake form. 
remember to use these key terms that are labeled on this diagram and put into a simple flow diagram for me. Right, the most difficult task on here is this question. How do erosion and deposition create meanders? So think about those two processes. How does erosion on the outside of a river and how does deposition on the inside bend of the river create that meander? So have a try and write an answer for that, please. I look forward to uh, reading some of those. And finally, what comes along with every lesson is that little quiz for you to complete. Please can you try and um, only complete the quiz after you've done the work as a bit of bit more of a test of what you've done in the lesson rather than doing it straight away. Uh, thanks for listening and I hope you are all very well.